Good morning. How does the reality of Jesus' resurrection from the dead and our promised resurrection from the dead inspire us to live? 1 Corinthians 15, 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. So we can't get into heaven with our present fallen bodies of flesh. We must have new, righteous bodies, imperishable, spiritual, eternal. And since we can't get those for ourselves, as in our salvation, God must give them to us. They are gifts of his grace, and fortunately, he gives them to us. Verse 51, behold, I tell you a mystery. Listen up, pay attention. Behold, God is informing us of something that we would have no way of knowing if he did not choose to reveal it to us. It's about the future, what is to come. 51, we shall not all sleep, meaning we shall not all die. Some will be alive at the second coming of Christ. But for those who do die, uh, like those who are alive at his return, but we shall be all changed in a moment. How quickly will this happen? In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the final sound will be from God. He will have the final word in all matters, and his sound will be that of the victorious blowing of the trumpet. Verse 52, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. The Lord Jesus will return, and every believer will receive their imperishable, heavenly, spiritual, eternal body. Again, why? 53, for this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. We must have a heavenly body fit for heaven, and we shall receive it by grace. Verse 54, when the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The enemy of death, brought on by sin, will finally and fully be devoured by Christ's victorious defeat of it. Verse 55, O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? Now, yes, death has had its victory since creation and the fall, and its sting has been felt by all humanity who suffered and died and had loved ones suffer and die, but no more. When Christ returns, no more death. Why? How? Well, 56, the sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. 57, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So because of Christ, as we were given him in salvation, we are given his victory over sin and death. How do we live? Well, we thank God for the salvation he secured for us in Christ's death and resurrection. We worship our Lord Jesus Christ, who has saved us from our sin. And then notice verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Knowing how much we're loved, be steadfast, faithful, enduring, persevering, continuing in your faith immovable, standing firm in the gospel of grace, the truth of God's word, abounding in your service to the Lord, in his work, in his kingdom, in the lives of people. For that work, it's not in vain. It's not wasted time or effort, not useless and it's not forgotten. Your labor in the Lord will be remembered and rewarded. So be faithful. That's how we're to live in light of Christ's resurrection and ours to come. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for revealing to us what is to come and assuring us that you are fully in control and you have great things planned. Today, fill us with your spirit that we might be steadfast, immovable, abounding in our service to you. And now, offer your prayers. God bless you.